guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Emily and today's video we are going to be looking at my internship binder now I kind of mentioned this in my last video I'm doing a series on this channel all revolving around student teaching and your placements in the elementary classroom or secondary classroom depending on what your education major is I know that some of you might not be teachers, so this kind of is not what you would want to watch. That's perfectly fine. Don't feel like you have to watch it. But I just want people that are going into education or are the, in the education department to kind of see like what I use when it comes to my internship binder. I love having a binder instead of like little folders just because it keeps everything intact. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. When you look at my binder, you will see that it has a cover and it has cactuses on it and then it says the word internship. I do this for every semester. I will go in and search on Google cute binder covers and this time I found some cactuses so I was like okay that's cute and then I insert a text box and then just write the word internship last semester I was in pre-internship so I wrote pre-internship and then the semester before that I was in methods now if you're like okay pre-internship methods what is that at my university starting in our junior year of college we start going into um, an elementary school or a secondary school and we spend time in the classroom observing a teacher teaching lessons and stuff like that so foundations block is junior year semester one we are just observing the teacher and we're there for maybe a month we observe her we help her if we need to and make copies things like that um, just to kind of get the hang of like every day going to school and you know like um, management and stuff then junior year second semester is methods block and in methods block you are there for a little bit longer than a month I believe and you have to teach three lessons all of these are ELA English language arts and during that you have to video yourself um, and then we submit that online and that kind of gets us the hang of EdTPA and if you're unfamiliar with that it's just this program that we have to do we have to like do assessments and test the kids and see how we would gauge our next lesson depending on how the students respond to that lesson the lesson before so it's a bunch of you know like typing and um, commentaries about the lessons running really long lesson plans so then in pre-internship, which is senior year, semester one, we are in the class for maybe two months, and here we teach a lot. We teach three ELA lessons, two math lessons, social studies, and a science lesson. Um, but on top of that, you know, like we really work hard to put ourselves in the position as the teacher without overstepping your boundaries. You kind of do the a mock ed TPA, if you will. It's kind of our university's way of preparing us for internship. So that was very hectic and very stressful just because we did have a lot of work to do behind the scenes and we had a lot to do like in the classroom as well. So then this brings us to internship. Internship is all semester long from August to December. You are in the classroom every single day and you basically are the teacher. You go in with the attitude that by December you will literally be super, super exhausted, but you will also have so much preparation for your first year of teaching. This is when we do the real ed TPA. We do lesson plans after lesson plans after lesson plans. We write commentaries online. We give um, assessments and we use teachers by teachers and all these things like you are a real teacher basically without being paid. I know, whatever. So after I've given that little backstory, I just wanted y'all to get an idea of what my university requires to be a teacher. I know that 
some universities in my state only will require that you're in the classroom a couple times and then you go into internship. Some schools don't even do a TPA. That's fine. Um, lucky for y'all because it's a lot of work. But I'm super excited. I'm blessed to be going to the school that I am in. And I'm just excited to get started and to get kind of like a routine. Um, so yeah. Now we can get into the binder. That was probably a lot of information. And I know you didn't ask for it. But I told it to you anyways because I just... So many schools do it differently, and so it's like, I don't want to keep talking about, you know, like, pre-internship and placements and all this, and, like, you'd be like, what is she talking about? So, let's dive in. When you open up my binder, this is what you see on this first little part, this pocket. I just keep important um, papers and things like that. Right here is kind of like our um, orientation schedule and kind of notes that I wrote for that. Um, these are some stickers that I use to uh, decorate my calendars. I got these, um, you know, like in an agenda. So I'm not going to show these sticky notes right here just because they have like my live text login and then a brain pop website login. That's where I keep like important sticky notes for any type of login that I need for the semester. So this is what you see first in my binder. I have every calendar for each month in here and then I just, you know, write down important things. I cross it off. Internship starts on the 27th, so that's fun. I do this for every single month. I will link this down below. I found it online if I can find it again. So I've already written down, you know, when my school is off for holidays and I've marked that off just to give me like a little, you know, like, okay, get to this day, you have the day off, you're good kind of, you know, feel. I have found that I cannot use an agenda. I don't know why, I just, you know, once I close the agenda, it's like I don't want to open it up again, I guess. And I need to see like colors and I need to see like cute things and I don't know I've just found that this works best for me I did this last semester in pre-internship I had every month you know like this it was a different style it wasn't the same um, print off but it helped me so much to have it right in my binder that way when me and my teacher were planning I could just flip right to the month and say okay yes I can teach that day or whatever instead of having to go get an agenda whip it out turn to the page it was like why make something so much more difficult when you can go on Google print off a sheet and just put it in your binder I also right back there actually have a wall calendar hanging up and it's literally the same thing um, it's from Target and I just write important dates that way when I'm at home I don't have to take this out if I, you know, don't need to, and I have it on my wall. So this is very, very helpful. I would suggest anybody to do this. Uh, so yeah. The next thing that is in my binder are these weekly to-do lists. I like lists. I feel like a lot of teachers like to have lists. and this kind of ties into the whole agenda thing like I need to write down the dates that things are due when I need to do them and things like that and last semester I just took a piece of you know copy paper and I wrote out my to-do list and I was like you know what I'm sure there's something cute on TPT that I could use so found this um, I just you know printed it off and I put it in here. I printed off a bunch um, just to get me through the first couple of weeks um, and then I've kind of put stickers you know like in areas and it's like be filled with joy, dare to dream. I highly suggest that. I will leave um, where I found that down below in the description box as well if you want to print them off. The next are standards. These are the kindergarten standards standards from Alex. Um, I have ELA, Math, Science, and Social Studies. These are, you know, the only ones that I need for 
my class and I have just printed them off put sticky notes labeled them you know ELA standards and so on so I highly suggest having standards in your binder somewhere you can go to the website I don't just because I need to see it right then and there again if we're planning then I want to be able to whip out the standard and say okay does this lesson match this standard without having to pull out a laptop or having my CT pull out her standards you want to be more prepared than less prepared um, just in the case that you know you need them so I have all of those there's a lot the next thing in my binder is this mystery student page I used this last semester when my um, supervisor came for my uh, lesson to observe me teach. I needed my students to be on their best behavior possible. And I was like, okay, what can I do as an incentive to get them to behave? And came up with this, seen it everywhere. It's not like I came up with it. I just, you know, remembered it. It's a mystery student. You get a sheet of paper, you write mystery student on it. You put it on the wall, the whiteboard. You write a kid's name underneath the paper where they can't see it. And you say, okay, I have a student. It's our mystery student. And if they are on their best behavior this whole lesson, you will get blank. I said, you know, two minutes extra recess, whatever. Didn't even give them extra time. It's just the thought, okay? So the whole time, they don't know who the student is. It could be them. It could be them. But you don't want to be the one that makes everyone, you know, stay inside for recess or not get the prize. Worked great. Made an A on my lesson. Highly suggest it. Took no time at all. And I said it even before my CT or my supervisor got there. So it was great. But she did see it on the board and she commented on it. So it's little things like that that will get you very, very far in your grading um, system. Okay, so this next page, uh, well, I'm going to have to cover something up. Uh, ugh, I'm going to have to cover like all of this up. Okay, so this is my meet the student teacher. I'm trying to go... Ugh. I'm trying to cover it up. Okay. This is my Meet the Student Teacher page. I found this on TPT. Again, I will link it below. You just type your information in or you download it. You type your information in. I just introduced myself. I have a picture of me, my name, what I like to do, all of my favorites, a quote from Rita Pearson, um, and then, you know, my CT's contact information. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. These next few things, you'll see like task 1, task 2, task 3, task 4, and task 5. These are all related to EdTPA. So, I have these little um, dividers that have pockets, and this is where I put any information for that task at. Like, that's where I put the information. I have sample lesson plans in here from last semester just to help me, you know, remember what I need to do for EdTPA just because it does get very hectic. The rubrics and stuff are there. Um, you know, like task two commentary, things like that. I don't want to like give it away. Here's um, a sample lesson plan and you'll see that it is stapled because it's like four to five pages. You get the point. It's a lot. That is everything I keep in my internship binder. If you liked it and if you liked, you know, the little tips that I gave you, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. If you want to know all the tips and tricks related to internship and placements and being in the classroom and being successful as a student teacher, stay tuned until my next video and I'll see you guys later. Bye!